emuna, um, like the biblical faith. That's what I want to discuss today. It's a question that I get from a lot of different ways and a lot of different directions. And this session, I want to answer this foundational question. In one of the earlier sessions, we spoke about emuna as being faith and emun as being practice. Um, like as if they're intertwined, faith and action. Um, but what does it mean to live by the faith of Israel? I mean, is faith just blind obedience in action that what it says, that's how I'm living and so there I know? I mean, from a biblical perspective, how exactly is our faith supposed to shape our lives? Um, so let's go to the very source of it all. Let's turn to the Tanakh and explore how the giants of faith lived so we can integrate their faith journeys into our lives. So let's go straight to the source. What is it to be Israel? Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Um, the context here is Jacob is on his way back to Israel. He's struggling with an angel all night. At the end of this struggle, he gets a new name. He gets a new name from Jacob. His name is transformed into Israel. And here we have a key of what it is to be Israel. What is that? What does that word mean? And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with man and have prevailed. So what is it to be Israel? To be Israel is to embrace the struggle and prevail. What, is it a part to, what does it mean to be a part of the destiny of Israel? What does it mean to be a part of this fellowship of the land of Israel. At Ben Gurion Airport, there used to be a big sign that said, welcome to Israel. It should have said, welcome to Israel. Welcome to the struggle. From the get-go, Abraham follows his first command to make Aliyah, to go to Israel. He gets, out, gets to the land, and the first thing he encounters is a famine. That is one of the most amazing stories in the Bible. Abraham, he's teaching us all how to walk with God. He's teaching us all how to live by faith, loyal to his calling, obedient to God. He leaves his home, leaves his father's house, gets to Israel, blessed. The man comes into the middle of a famine. It's like the least motivating story ever. Follow God in your life and you'll end up alone in a strange land, starving for food, and the locals blaming you that your God brought this famine onto them. I mean, if you think about it, it's like unbelievable. I mean, what a story. Um, it's just devastating to Avraham. Avraham comes to the land of Israel, proclaiming faith in one God, calls on people to love each other, to stop child sacrifice. And as soon as he arrives, famine hits the land. I mean, imagine the conversations he has with the locals here trying to explain, well, if you follow the ways of God, you'll be blessed. And the locals are like, just since you came here and started this nonsense about one God and love and compassion, I mean, you brought a family, you've upset all of our other gods that don't exist. I mean, what are we going to do with that? And he has to like, well, what does he say? It's like, from the get-go, Avraham is like in a, in a struggle. From the get-go, there's no like easy way here to be Israel is to be in some sort of struggle. That's what it seems like the Torah is teaching us. Now, think about what it took for the Jewish people to return to the land of Israel and make it into the country that it is today. The struggles and the accomplishments of modern Israel are all inspiring There is no other way to describe them. To be Israel is to struggle with man, to struggle with God, and to prevail. To struggle with God. It's as though the Torah is telling us that the people of the book, the people who will define what it is to be a people of faith, define our belief as a struggle. We define it as a constant growth process, something that we're like dealing with, we're investigating, we are exploring, we're never comfortable. We don't want to just like, all right, give me the pill, I got it, I'm faith, I'm saved. No, it's a constant avoda, it's a service. And so, uh, you know, it's like for Israel, there is no moment which you're able to put God in a box, in a theology, in a denomination, then go take a nap. There is an inherent conversation that's going on, an inherent growth process, an inherent struggle with God, constant seeking. We are in pursuit of something that's higher than us. Even the greatest prophets recognize the mystery of existence. If God was a mystery to the prophets, do we really expect to categorize a God in our declarations of faith and, and comfortably put the inexplicable into a box or a mathematical equation? It's like, not only that, we don't ever hear 
what Abraham believed about God. We know a lot about how they lived. In fact, we know that their faith and understanding of God was definitionally incomplete. Like no one tries to paint Abraham as the know-it-all understander of God that had perfect faith in all of God's aspects. We actually know that Abraham did not know God the way that Moses knew God. God tells Moses that he never revealed his name to the patriarchs as he's revealing himself now to this generation in Egypt. The Torah makes it so clear that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't even know God's name. Look at Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. This is God explaining to Moses where he's at. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but my name, Hashem, I was not known to them. I did not let them know that part of the name. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means that their faith was fundamentally incomplete. The patriarchs did not know God's name, and that's not seen as a sin. That was just the reality of where they were in their evolution, in their faith journey. And in some ways, the entire Torah is a map of all of our faith journeys. There are aspects of God that we don't understand at the very beginnings, and there are aspects of God that we continue to grow and learn throughout our lives. It's, it's okay that it's incomplete. Their relationship with God was in development. Their understanding of God and his ways was incomplete. God's name reveals aspects of how he relates to the world. And he is seemingly in a process of revealing more and more as time goes on. The giants and pillars of the nation of Israel didn't know entire aspects about the existence of God. And that's absolutely okay. Not only is that okay, that is direction for us that we should never feel the need or the arrogance to think like, ah, I got it. I figured it out. God is like this. There we go. There's my faith. I can just put that on a shelf now and I'm good to go. You know, it's like, although we want to know what we believe, we want to label it, we want to control it. The Torah here is guiding us that we are in a constant movement of revelation. Some people seek out religion as a quick fix. I'm sorry. That's just not going to fly. I mean, easy come, easy go. The Torah is telling us that we should seek something here. We should be struggling. You want something real. You want something deep. You want to get more insight. You want to be asking better questions. We don't need to have all the answers. In some ways, the questions, the struggle, the attempt to draw closer is more important than the answer itself. The Torah has a very particular way they define the early heroes of the Bible. They are described as people who walked with God. Look at these verses here. Let's talk about Noah and Abraham. Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, Hashem appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be tamim, be pure, be perfect be wholehearted. I don't know how to translate that word, but it's sort of like a mixture of all of those. Tamim. Walk before me and be pure. Be good. Be wholehearted. Now, there's no question that our role models and how we are to live should be modeled after the characters of the Torah. They walked with God. I want to walk with God. What does that mean? What does it mean to walk with God? It doesn't mean oh, I have an intellectual understanding of the workings of God. No, I'm, I'm walking with God. It's like a dance. It's like I'm taking one step and God is taking another step and reality is unfolding in a new way and guiding us in another direction. We're literally walking with God. But what does that mean? This is such a deeply rooted idea in the Jewish mind that the Torah law is the same word as to walk. I mean, halacha, which means the Torah law, is the same word as halach, which means to walk. I mean, there's a whole bunch of words uh, for the law in Hebrew, mishpat, chok, din, Jewish law isn't called any of those legal terms. Jewish law is called the walk. That is just so beautiful. I mean, here we uncover the essence of faith as it should be understood and lived according to the Tanakh. To live with faith is not only to live in action, but it's to live faithfully. In the last sessions, we talked a little bit about this. Let's just do a little quick review. Emunah means faith. 
And moon means practice. But here's another kicker. Here's another level. Ne'eman, which is the same exact root, is loyal. Loyal. So we have faith. We have action. We have practice. And then we have loyalty. Biblical faith directs us towards a living relationship with God. That's the essence of covenant. In relationships, there are moments of intimacy. There's moments of distance, highs, lows. Relationship is real. It's dynamic. But to walk with God, to be wholehearted, is to be loyal. In our encounter with God, we like touch the ultimate good. We align ourselves with that vision in that direction, and then the walk begins, one step at a time. We don't have all the answers. There's so much unknown, so much mystery, but we're always given enough to take the next step. I mean, I want you to look at this word Israel for just a moment. Now, the Torah tells us that Israel is kisarita because you struggled. Inside the word Israel is struggle. But the word itself, Israel, is made up of two words. One is yud shin resh, which is yashar, which means straight. And then you have El, which means God. So think about what that's saying to us. What is it to live by the faith of Israel? It is to put God up in front of our vision. And then straight, we have a path. We have our eyes set on the kingdom of God, our highest ideals, our values that will never be corrupted. We will never, ever, just to live out our life with laser-like focus, straight ahead. The default of this world is struggle. And the definition of Israel is to struggle and to prevail. We have the keys, how to persevere through the hard times and how to prevail. It's like the Jewish people are a monument, a living monument of what it means to persevere and prevail. We have the keys, and here it is, the Torah from Zion to the world. Here's what it is. These are the keys that are being gifted to the branches around the world that you should bring those fruits of blessings to the people around you. Outside of the garden, we have to work to make pay. We have to work even harder to raise our kids. We are going to be challenged and pushed to the ends of our limits and beyond. And that seems to be one of the fundamental purposes of life. It's like to grow beyond ourselves. It's like in the struggle, I become more than who I am. Maybe that's the purpose here, to become more than who you were. That's why Israel is called to embrace the struggle, to embody the struggle. When you prevail, you emerge triumphant. You emerge greater and stronger. A life of emunah is not something that you can just casually say, I believe. I don't know where that came from. That idea might as well be from the devil himself. I mean, people just give just enough truth to then like take it in and then see how silly that is. I mean, that's just not going to last. Biblical faith, you contend with the world. You struggle with the world. You struggle towards God. You struggle with yourself. And in the struggle, you discover your strength. You discover your character, your inner value. You discover yourself. The challenges of life are going to hit us, and there is nothing we can do about that. But in confronting the suffering of life, you can do something honorable, admirable, noble, worthy, glorious, powerful, helpful, upright, right there. That's the light of Israel. 